What's up guys, welcome back. A Thanksgiving dinner table just isn't complete without a big pot of collard greens, so that's what's on the menu today. But before we do that, please take a quick second to subscribe to the channel. Make sure to hit that bell to enable notifications as well. All right guys, meet me in the kitchen, let's make it happen. No worries, you don't have to call the pork police today because we're using smoked turkey for these collard greens. Here I have drumsticks and turkey necks. I like to use a combination of both because I feel like the most flavor comes from the turkey neck, but it never provides enough meat, so that's what the drumsticks here for. And speaking of flavor, here's all the veggies and herbs that we're gonna use for our braising liquid, which is the key to good collard greens. We're also going in with a tablespoon of better than bouillon chicken base. As always guys, the specific measurements and ingredients are provided for you in the description box below so don't forget to check that out now we're just going to give a rough chop to our veggies we got the celery we got some onions we got some garlic for the garlic you just smash them with your knife like you see me doing right here we're going to end up straining this off anyway so there's really no right or wrong way to do this we just want to make sure we get all the flavor from these ingredients into our broth for these collard greens and now that we got all the prep work out of the way, it's time to make this liquid gold for our greens. We're going in with one tablespoon of better than bouillon chicken base. And then we're going in with all that smoked turkey, which is going to add tons of flavor to the party. As you can see, mine is still frozen, but that doesn't matter because we're going to cook this down until it falls off the bone. We want to add all those veggies and herbs, fill the pot up with water, and then bring this up to a boil. And now it's time to talk collard greens. Now I realize there's a million different ways to prep these beauties, but this is how I like to do it. So what I've found is that if you fold the leaf over the stem and pinch it all the way across like you see right here it just makes it so much easier to remove the leaf from the stem it's basically a similar concept to how you would tear a sheet of paper now i realize that some people like to cook their collard greens with the stem but for me they just don't get tender and i don't really like that so i like to remove the stem keeping the leaf behind and then we're just going to repeat that process for the remainder of our collard greens this recipe here feeds about eight to ten people but if you're having a big party for thanksgiving you might want to double the recipe and another quick reminder that all the specific measurements and ingredients are provider for you in the description box below. So once we've gotten rid of all those stems, it's time to show you guys how I like to cut my greens. So what you want to do is lay them out in the same direction and stack them up like you see me doing right here. And then we're going to roll them nice and tight. Now, some of you guys have more experience rolling greens nice and tight than others, but that's a conversation for another day. Now you guys see why we got rid of those stems. All right, man, enough with the weed jokes. All right, break out the sharp knife and then we're going to make thin slices. Again, this is a matter of personal preference, guys. So if you want bigger chunks of collard greens, that's totally up to you. But this is the size that I like to shoot for. I like to have a nice even bite on the fork. So just repeat that process for all of your collard greens. We're going to pile them up evenly, roll them up tightly, and then slice them nice and thin. Just like you see right here. There we go. This is about the size that I'm shooting for just for demonstration purposes. So that's what I'm looking for when I'm slicing my collard greens. Now, my friends, it's time to clean these bad boys because when you get them from the farmer's market or the grocery store, they tend to be pretty dirty. So let's go ahead and pile them up, throw them into the largest mixing bowl that you got. And then we're going to run them under some cold water. You want to rinse them about four or five times until the water runs clear. Get in there with your hands and really massage them around, work them around in that water. Make sure you get off any sand or dirt. Make sure they're nice and clean. You could even soak them for an hour or so with some cold water and some vinegar if you want. But I typically just rinse them four or five times until that water runs clear, then you're good to go. All right, guys, now it's time to check on our broth. The cooking time for this is going to vary depending on if your turkey was frozen like mine was. If it is, it's going to take about 60 to 90 minutes to really get nice and tender. So just check on it every once in a while and get in there with a fork or some tongs. And once you see that the meat is falling off the bone, you know you're good to go. So we're going to remove all of the smoked turkey, put that in a separate mixing bowl, and then we're going to strain this liquid gold that we're going to cook our collard greens in. As you can see, this turkey meat is just falling off the bone. Oh my goodness. My wife likes to steal half of that, so be careful who you allow to help you with this task in the kitchen. So you want to strain this through a wire strainer like you see right here, just catching all the stuff that we don't want to end up in our collard greens. There we go, and what we have left behind is absolutely delicious. We're going to pour that right back into our Dutch oven or large pot that we're going to cook our collard greens in. And then you want to give it a taste and see how it's coming along. So I'm going to get in there with a spoon. One of the keys to cooking, guys, is to taste as you go and adjust the flavor to your preference. As you can see, we haven't added a whole lot of seasoning just yet. We're tasting to see where we're at. 
and damn that's good i'll put that in a cup and drink it all jokes aside i call this stuff liquid gold for a reason it's packed with flavor it's a great foundation for any soup stew beans collard greens all that good stuff so once we got it right where we want it we're going to add those clean collard greens to that liquid gold cover it with a lid and allow that to braise on medium for about 15 minutes or so until it cooks down you want to check it every once in a while stir it around and then we're going to start to season to taste here in a minute once your collard greens have cooked down a bit, we're going to add back in that smoked turkey from earlier. It's important to pick through it though and make sure you get rid of any bone, cartilage, or excess skin. Basically anything that you wouldn't want to eat in your collard greens. So once you got it just right, we're going to add back in the turkey meat into the collard greens. Get in there and mix all that together. Let all those flavors come together and get to know each other's business. Oh man, there's nothing like a good pot of collard greens, guys. Let me know in the comments what your favorite side dish is for Thanksgiving. This is definitely up there. I know mac and cheese and candy yams get all the love, but collard greens are super underrated. I have some more recipes on the way, guys. So let me know what you want to see before the holidays get here. I'm going in for a taste test just to make sure we're doing all right before we start seasoning it. Keep in mind that the better than bouillon and the turkey have a little salt in there, so you don't want to season it too early. I want to cook this down, get them nice and tender, then I'm going in for a taste test, and then we're going to season to taste. So I'm going in with some of my all-purpose seasoning, which is a blend of salt, pepper, garlic, and onion powder. If you haven't tried that yet, I do have a link for you in the description box and a discount code for you there as well. But season to taste, so we're going in with that. I'm gonna add about a tablespoon or so of apple cider vinegar. Followed by a few dashes of hot sauce. You can use whatever your favorite hot sauce is. That's optional as well, but I like a little bit of heat with my collard greens. Then we're going in with two tablespoons of butter because health. Give that a good mix. Say it with me guys, looking good. This is coming together beautifully. Once the collard greens are nice and tender, all you wanna do now is turn the heat up a little bit and cook down some of that liquid. It'll reduce nicely. We'll put the lid back on. 15 minutes later, this is how we're looking. Oh man, this is perfect. You use more or less meat depending on your preference. This is exactly how I like mine though. And now my friends, it's time to plate this up. Brace yourself for a trademark money shot. Oh my goodness, look at those collard greens. The steam is just screaming off of there. Probably a little too hot for the taste test, but what the hell. Oh man. Doesn't get much better than that, guys. That is a perfect bowl of greens. I would drop the fork, but I'm gonna go eat these. Let me know what you think in the comments. Give me a thumbs up. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and the bell to enable notifications. And as always, thank you for your support.